Sometimes the cosmos can be a little boring. So let's be naughty. Why does the Earth need the moon? Why not put a fidget spinner in its place? What would happen if a super giant mega fidget spinner took the place of the moon? For convenience, let's assume that the mass of the spinner is equal to that of the moon. If so, then its diameter will be much greater than the diameter of the moon. As the density of a spinner is less than the average lunar density by about one and a half times, and the spinner isn't spherical and has holes, for example, if all the spinner's matter were collected into a sphere, it would be larger than that of the moon. Anyway, its diameter will be three and a half thousand kilometers more than the diameter of the moon, due to its, in terms of physics, ineffective form. The spinner will reach a minimum of 10 and perhaps even 15,000 kilometers in diameter. What will happen to the Earth basically depends on the position of the spinner in orbit and the side to which it would spin. But first, let's talk about changes that do not depend on its orientation in space. The spinner is, of course, made of plastic, and plastic reflects light five times stronger than the Moon. If the spinner is turned on its edge towards the Earth, the brightness of our nights will hardly change, because only a small part of the spinner will be visible. But if it is turned to face the Earth, our nights will be about 20 times brighter, as the spinner shines with reflected sunlight. If the spinner isn't white, but some other color, then our nights will be painted in this same color. But if it's black, our ordinary earthly night will become completely dark. Our main light source will disappear and only the stars will remain, which is not enough for even minimal illumination of the Earth at night. Perhaps the spinner will create its own magnetic field by spinning. If it does, it will overlap with the Earth's magnetic field, protecting us even further from solar radiation. But this will do some harm to some of our animals as many of them orient themselves along the lines of the Earth's magnetic field. The new spinner moon magnetic field would likely confuse them, forcing birds to migrate by more habitual routes and confusing fish and bees off their normal courses. Solar eclipses will be something undreamed of. The spinner blades will hide the sun and then show it. In the case when the spinner's face is directed at the Earth, incomplete eclipses will occur much more often, with the sun obscured by the blades. And it will not be the slow and majestic concealing of the sun that we are used to, but rather will resemble the sudden turning off of a light. Well, now let's talk about truly disastrous consequences. If the spinner is parallel to the Earth's equator, it will strongly influence the rotation of the Earth by its rotation. Rotating in the same direction as the Moon, it will, in a way, untwist the Earth, shortening our day to several hours, and maybe even just to tens of minutes. The thing is, the spinner blades, because of their huge mass, will have a powerful gravitational effect, and due to the fact that they protrude far beyond the center, their influence on the Earth will be much stronger than the influence of the Moon. The direction of rotation of the spinner blades and the Earth will coincide, and the blades will pull the Earth with them, speeding up its rotation. If the rotation of the blades is in the opposite direction, the Earth will slow down. The mass and inertia of rotation of the spinner will not suffice to leave the Earth's orbit, nor to reverse its rotation, but our day will greatly increase, perhaps up to 30 or 40 hours. The spinner will stop quite quickly, by the standards of outer space, in only a couple of hundred or thousands of years, since by transferring gravitational energy to accelerate or slow down the rotation of the Earth, it will lose speed in its own rotation. Now, if the spinner is turned to the planet on its edge, then it will move the Earth's axis. The blades will now pull the Earth up or down. When rotating downwards, towards the southern hemisphere, the Earth's axis will approach the present equator. It is impossible to say exactly how far the axis will move. But if its slope increases twofold, from, say, 20 degrees to 40, then the polar nights and days will pass almost throughout all of Europe. Canada, and the northern parts of the USA and Russia, southern Africa, South America, and about half of Australia. If the spinner turns in the opposite direction and reduces the tilt of the Earth by 20 degrees, 
almost to zero, then because of this, not only will the polar nights and days disappear, but also the seasons. By the way, in the first case, with a 40 degree slope, spring and autumn will become much shorter, and winter and summer will become much stronger. As in, winters will be colder and summers will be hotter. It doesn't matter which of these two positions the spinner will be in. In both cases, we will be met with incredibly powerful earthquakes and super uber duper volcanic eruptions. The atmosphere of the Earth will be filled with volcanic dust and will trigger a kind of nuclear winter, as the dust blocks much of the sunlight from reaching the Earth's surface. And for all those thousands of years, while the spinner slows down, eruptions and earthquakes will continue. Due to the huge emissions of lava, tsunamis and earthquakes, many new islands and peninsulas will appear and many of the existing will disappear. For example, Japan may well go underwater. In the end, when the spinner stops, the volcanoes will gradually calm down and a few centuries later the dust will settle from the atmosphere. The ice age will end. So you understood, right? This is your spinner, and even used the right way, it can be a pretty dangerous toy. Don't mess with it. And to keep the Earth out of danger, I suggest signing the petition to ban fidget spinners across the entire world. Don't just sit there. Go to the link. Millions of people have already voted against this madness. You should too.